Hello and welcome to this section of the MATLAB Tutor. Uh, here in this section we're going to begin to use matrices which are absolutely essential to MATLAB. In fact, Matt's lab stands for Matrix Laboratory. So as you've probably noticed so far, MATLAB is really centered around uh, entering things. We were doing it last section in terms of vectors and I hinted uh, more than once that really a vector is just a matrix with one row. And so here we're going to expand that uh, and do some of the same operations but with full-blown matrices. So uh, in MATLAB matrices really take center stage because ultimately you can store all of your data in a matrix and then use the built-in operations that MATLAB provides to operate on that data. And so you can operate and, and work with really large data sets at any, at any one time and, and do it all at once. So before we actually jump into matrices I'm going to do a quick five minute recap because it, it's directly uh, it's a direct extension of kind of what we've done before. If I create a vector called, uh, let me just call it test vector, right? We did this in the, in the last several sections. How would I do that? I just type the name in and set it equal to, and I open a bracket, and I said, okay, I can set this vector equal to 1, negative 2, space 4, space 5, space negative 1, or something like this. Now, this vector has five elements. You put spaces between the elements and you enclose them in these brackets. And if I hit enter, then the uh, variable test vector is created and it echoes it back to me and here it is. So I can use test vector in calculations or whatever I'm doing. We've done all that stuff before with vectors. And if I want to extract a, a single element from this vector, then I just type the name in open a parenthesis and just ask it for what element I want. So let's say element number two and close the parentheses off. When I hit enter it takes the second element out of the vector and puts it back uh, you know, onto the screen for me. Let me bring that last guy up. If I want to instead extract a range of elements, let's say I want to extract this element, this element, and this element, so then I would put two colon uh, four. And what this colon means is it's going to extract elements of test, ve test vector elements two through four. So element two, element three, and element four. So this is element two, this is element three, this is element four. So when I hit enter, basically I get a sub vector back. I get a, a new vector that's kind of formed from the original vector and it comes back in terms of a vector. You can see it's, it's spaced out and listed just as a, as a vector there. So I can extract elements from vectors and I can extract ranges of elements, um, you know, subsets of the vector, so to speak. All right, so we've done all that before. The reason I am um, uh, wanting to share that with you is because creating a matrix is sort of a direct extension of that. So let me clear the screen. Let me put now I'm just going to clear the screen. So instead of typing a vector in the way we just did, if you want to do a matrix, I'm going to name this guy test matrix and I'm going to set it equal to, you open a bracket just as you always do, and if you do something like one, two, three, four, if you just closed it off like that, then that would be a vector just, like we, just as we just created a minute ago. But instead of closing it off, I'm going to put a semicolon. And then I'm going to type four more guys in. Four, three, negative two, nine. Okay. Now if I close it off here, what I've done is the first four elements, these guys right here, this is the first row of the matrix. The spacing is, is spacing them out you know, along, along the way as we've been doing for the vectors. But the semicolon tells MATLAB, okay, go to the next row. These next four guys are in the next row. So if I actually hit enter here, then this is the test, this is test matrix right here. So the first row is what I've put all the way up till the semicolon. The next row starts afterwards, right? So this is how you enter matrices in MATLAB. You literally type the elements in for the first row, and then you type the elements in for the second row, and you just put a semicolon between them. Now let me bring up that last thing I entered. This is what I typed in. Now I'm going to add even more to it. I'll just take that bracket off. I'll put another semicolon and I'll just put five, five, four, four. That's my third row. I'll put that a semicolon there and I'll put a fourth row. Negative one, space negative two, space negative three, space negative eight. And I'll close it off with a bracket. So here I am changing the value of test matrix. Um, this is the first row. This is the second row to that semicolon. This is the third row to that semicolon. And this is the fourth row to that semicolon. And when I hit enter, 
you can see now I have a four by four matrix. So this is the first row, second row, third row, fourth row, and you can see that the semicolons basically tell MATLAB when to go to the next row. So this is the easiest way to enter a matrix into MATLAB anytime you need to deal with a matrix. Now a lot of times if you have a data file like some raw data that you've collected in some experiment or some survey or something you might have it in a, in a data file and then you can import that data into a matrix to, to operate on it. Now we'll get into importing data much later on um, but when you're entering the thing by hand this this would be the easiest way to do it. You just type everything in. All right so um, notice how we have obviously four rows in this case and four columns. So much like in the matrix guy, I mean in the vector guy where we could extract elements, let me clear the screen here. Let's do test vector. Let's put that up and test matrix. All right. So remember how we how we extracted elements before from test vector. We just put a parentheses and we put, you know, element 3. Give me element 3. Well, that isn't going to really be too in informative for a matrix because where's element 3 at, right? So if you want to extract an element of a matrix, here's how you do it. Matrix, test matrix, parentheses. You have to tell it what element you want. So let's say I want this one here, right? This number three here. This is in row number two, column number two, right? So I put two comma two like this. It always goes in MATLAB row comma column. So it's row column. So row two, column two, hit enter. And this number three is what was passed back. If I recall this guy, and I put row number three like this, column number four. Then it goes row three, column four. I should get this four back. Let's see what I get. And I do get the four back. You know, if I could do uh, row four, column one, then this is going to be row four, column one should be a negative one. And that's what I get back, negative one. So a lot of times when you're dealing with with vector with uh, matrices like this, you might, you know, import some data, put it in a few matrices, do all kinds of analysis and, and manipulations of that data, and then you might want to extract specific pieces of data to display, you know, to display to yourself. And so then this this is how you would reach into that matrix. You can kind of think of this as a as a window. You reach into that matrix and you grab whatever element um, that you want. Now let me clear the screen test vector let me just show you that's well that's test vector I don't want to put that let me clear the screen test matrix this is the matrix if you forget about that and you just put element one like this with no comma no row comma column MATLAB is going to return a number one which is the first element of this matrix if you put a two in there MATLAB is going to go down and give you this guy if you put a three there MATLAB is going to go down this column and give you that. If you put a four, a four there, then you're going to get this one, this guy. And if you put a five there, it's going to go off to the next column and give you this number two. So it's not that useful to to do that. I mean, why would you? But if you know, for instance, that you want to count down, you know. The fifth element in is one, two, three, four. Here's the fifth element. You just have to remember to count down and up. That's how that's how MATLAB does it. Typically, you're not going to be interested in doing that. Typically, you're going to be interested in grabbing a specific element. So that's how you would do it.